Are you thinking about going into the cattle business? Then you're thinking right because the cattle industry is a very neglected industry in Africa just because they are too big and because most people are also scared of them. But it is a very recruitive business if you do it the right way. And that is why today I'm going to share with you eight tips of how I have become a successful cattle farmer and true cattle farming have been able to start poultry farm, goat farm, and now even thinking about pig farm. And that is what I'm gonna share with you guys today. Hello, hello guys. Once again, welcome to Farming in Africa and my name is Fred. Today we are going to be talking about eight things for you to succeed in the cattle business. And not only in the cattle business, if you are in the livestock business, stay tuned because you might be able to borrow a few things from this video and take it out there. But before I go into that, I want to ask you guys a question. If today is your second time, third time, fourth time, or even more watching any video from us my question to you is why haven't you subscribed to this channel if there is a reason or any way i can help you subscribe please go ahead and subscribe because the team says we are not growing as much as we are you guys are telling me that this channel needs 100 views and if you're not subscribing we are not going to go there because youtube is not going to see that people are enjoying this channel so please if you haven't subscribed yet and you're benefiting from this video and if you're watching us please go ahead and subscribe and if you like this video hit the like button and share it with your friends as well so that more people can enjoy this video as we continue to educate and share knowledge about how we can farm in Ghana and Africa the right way. Let's jump into today's topic. Today we are talking about eight things that we actually need to do or to become successful cattle farmer. I'm focusing on cattle, but you know, it mostly applies to, again, all livestock. Out of the eight, I will give you guys a bonus at the end of this video. So stay till the end and I have a bonus for you guys where I think you don't want to miss it even if you practice all these eight. The number one that I will talk about is your land. So you need to consider a land for your ranch. Gone are the days where we have cows and we put them on a small land and every morning we open them and they're roaming around destroying people's stuff having issues with other farmers and even causing conflict to the point that people are losing their life and livestock in the midst of this conflict. Those are the days. You are educated, you are a nice person, you are kind. Please don't get other people into these issues whilst you sit at your office or you sit in the city. The Fulani headsmen and the, all our headsmen are also human. The farmers in the community are the ones bringing food to us. So I always say this, don't ride on somebody for your success. So let's start with the land. So if you want to be a successful farmer, cattle farmer or any livestock farmer, make sure you have an adequate land for your farm. If you know that you're going to start with three cows, then make sure you have enough for it. If you know that you want to do this on a larger scale, then make sure you're investing into land. Because definitely land is what you need if you're going to be successful in any livestock farming, but especially in cattle farming. I started with about five acres and over the years have bought 11 acres and now have bought over 100 acres of land. And just because I realized that what I need and where I want to go with my cattle business is huge and therefore I needed to invest into it. So that is point number one to you. Point number two is fencing. As we are talking about intensive farming and being able to feed our livestock, we need to fence our land. I've done several videos on fencing. I've tried different um, fencing methods. You guys saw um, the metal fence that I did. When I first introduced my cows to my farm, I bought all the round poles. I think they were about three or four inches uh, round poles and basically designed them, cut them and build the whole ranch with it. 
Unfortunately, that didn't do very well for me because the cow that I brought in were used to grazing and roaming. So they didn't want to be confined. It took me a long time to be able to confine the babies and then be able to put them into that intensive method. But then I went ahead to actually fence a more bigger yard where they have more space and wouldn't feel like they are confined. I did that with a back of tick, which is basically um, in any tick processing factory, they leave the back where I use very cheaply to fence it. After some time, I actually started planting a tree that I know none of us know its name in English, but a tree that I put on the ground and in about two, three weeks time, it will start, you know, um, gaining roots and actually growing. As you guys can see, that is the tree that I have here. My next step with the fencing is to now use barbed wire to really fence it. But my cows are used to this now and will stay inside without going out. So you really want to fence it. It's, it will be sad or bad news for you to wake up one night and know that, you know, your, your cows or cattle has broken out and gone to destroy people's things. You don't want to go through that headache when you go into the livestock business. So make sure you're fencing it. There are so many kinds of fencing. I just walk you guys through my journey, but do some more research and make sure that you're fencing your livestock, again, against uh, theft and for your own security as well. The next thing that I want to go into is housing and shelter right depending on what livestock you're doing if you're doing goats you know how to build your shelter but today we are focusing on cattle and with your cattle shelter you know it's, it's great if you're able to provide shade for them because if you're keeping them at one place forever you don't want them to just be under the scorching sun especially in africa where you know the sun is very strong on us so you want to make sure that you have some shade i have a bit of shade especially where they are eating so that they can um, you know be under the shade and feed sometimes they want to be in the sun and that's okay but i know you can't you know sort of provide shade for the entire pen and therefore create a bit of shade in your shelter so that they can relax there if they want you know to cool off but um i think that is it in terms of building your 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 ranch we've spoken about it i went the metal way even though it didn't work in the beginning it did work um, later in the day i also built a smaller one for um the calves you know so when they are about first day of born to about six months i keep them in this wooden um structure where basically you know they can be released to go breast milk and then come back in there and then once after their six months i then move them to um, the metal structure that is how i am doing it or we are doing it here at the cementia farms and do more research and see what else works for you. But you definitely need a proper structure in order for you to succeed and also be able to separate from calf to winning where you have the hyphers and then to when they are fully matured um, to be crossed as well. The next thing that I wanna talk about after your structure and your fencing, your land is the breed, right? It's, I was listening to a podcast and the person was talking about who we are as a person and he said what you feed your mind right if you feed your mind with rubbish then who are you going to become as a person right so it's the same thing with our livestock if you buy bad breed cross-breeded animal then their babies you're going to be producing babies that are not healthy you're going to produce a cross-breeded um, livestock that you are not going to have value for so start with the right breed instead of starting with 20 cows maybe buy two where you know that you can trust this breed where you see the bull and you see the cow and you're like wow this is great this is a picture that i would like to post to people to see not um i've been to people's farm where they will actually tell me no don't film that one you know film only this one right so you want to start well you want to start with the right genetics the great thing is as you guys know now we are able to import goats we're able to import cow we're able to import a lot of livestock from other countries to ghana so don't stay here and just go and buy your local breeds that you're not really sure of and do things anyhow there is those times need to change we need to do it right we talked about you know thinking of farming as business and if you're going to do it as a business you want to make sure that you're buying something that's presentable that's quality that when people come to your farm they'll be you know 
energized and excited to actually buy from you and that's the same reason why most of you guys have been reaching me to buy from me but unfortunately i don't have anything to sell I, we can just import it um you know into the country for you so take this from me and get the right genetics the last thing i'll say about breed and genetic is that whether you have a good one or a bad one is the same quality feed you're going to give them is the same housing is the same land is the same shelter you're going to give it so why don't you get the best one so that you can actually be have quality product from what you're doing and that's why i recommend that you guys go in for the best breed the next thing is feeding if you're going to go into livestock especially cattle then you need to prepare your feed right again if you feed them with garbage you're gonna have garbage cows right if you feed if you allow them to go to the refuse dump like most of us do right and eat from the refuse dump then that's what you're gonna have you're gonna run at a loss they're gonna eat plastic they're gonna eat bad stuff and they're gonna deliver and give you bad results right and therefore you need to prepare your food once again you guys know that i've been a huge advocacy for this and that is why i brought the brachyria seed as you guys know we are also bringing alfalfa to ghana that you guys in, in in togo Cote d'ivoire nigeria east africa ghana you can contact us on the whatsapp number below get your brachyria seed go and plant it yes it's grass it's a threat and we are planting grass if you guys i know somebody's like gosh fred now you're making us plant grass yes we need to if you're gonna have a sustainable livestock farmer i have spent more money on grass than i've spent even on equipment i've spent more time and resources on grass than i've even spent on the livestock itself right and just because once you're able to crack that feed then there is no limit on how many goats, cows, sheep that you can have at your farm. So get your feed ready, get quality feed so that you will be able to have healthy nutrition for your cows and, and, and produce healthy babies as well. And talking about business, that's the only way you can actually make profit uh, from your livestock as well. So feed is huge and therefore don't take, don't, don't take that for granted. And talking about taking things for granted, another important point that I want to talk to you guys about is water. Not just any water, but a clean, fresh water, right? You guys think that, you know, cows can go around the room all day without drinking water. They are living things as you and I. I've been talking for quite a while now, and you guys can see I'm licking my mouth. It's because I need water. It's because I'm getting dry. The same thing as cows are eating and walking and doing all those exercises. They need water and they need clean water. So on your land, make sure you have either a borehole or you have a stream that you can fetch. And make sure you always have water for them. We are always changing our waters from morning, evening, morning, evening, so that there's always fresh water for our livestock because that is huge, hugely needed right to also help them with their digestive system and also give them more appetite for feeding so definitely don't take that um, for for granted so the seventh point is market right succeeding to me you know success is is varies for everybody but as a business farmer i would say your success is either breaking even or making profit and if you're going to do that that means that you need to be able to sell right and where are you going to sell you need to find a market. I always talk about doing your research, your market research before even going into it. But you need to create avenue. You need to start thinking about your market now. If you don't have presence on social media, create one now so that as you're buying your goat, you're showing people where you're buying it. As you're feeding them, you're showing people what you're feeding. You're building your market so that someday when you're ready to sell, you already have an audience who have been on this journey with you, know you, trust you, and will be able to come to your farm and buy. There is no way you can do that. It is for free of charge and go ahead, put the effort in it and have an online presence. Let the local people know that you're here and then wherever your market is so that you can create that market for yourself for future. I'm gonna go to the last point, which is management. 
huge i've done a video about how to hire the right manager i'm linking that over here or here wherever that video is gonna be go and watch that if you're having trouble finding the right manager um, for your farm because i think it is a key component especially if you're doing livestock you know you can either be the farmer that's on the field 24 7 but even that you still need people to do the you know to help you um, at the farm and to assist you in feeding in, in 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 so many different activities and therefore having the right people with the right mindset hard-working people to support you is key and i'm not forgetting trustworthy people because as you begin to scale you start seeing people stealing from you people lying to you and so on and so forth and that have collapsed so many business on our continent and that is mostly the reason why when an owner or a visionary of a business dies the business also dies with them because we don't have proper managers to take care of things for us so please that is another thing for you to think about and as i said i do have a surprise for you and that surprise for you guys is my number one point that i will tell you guys if you want to succeed please take your time to start small and learn I know you have the money, I know you have the land, but trust me, there is so much you can learn from just starting with one or two. That was a big mistake I did with cattle farming and I really had to struggle. I had to buy lands that I wasn't even ready for and start planting as much feed as I can. So please start small and learn from it. Another advantage to that is once you start small, you're able to learn about feeding, what works, what doesn't work, what are the diseases. We live in a continent where informations are limited. You're, you're starting a cattle farm, you don't even know if you're gonna have a veterinary officer be able to come. I had an extension officer come to my farm twice and since then he ran away. He was even more scared of cows than I was, right? So there's a lot of challenges that you will not know until you're in the business. So please start small and learn. Give yourself one year. You will learn if your manager is right. You will learn the right vaccinations you need to prepare for every year. You will learn the diseases. You will learn your feeding method. You will learn if what you're doing is working, if your fencing works, if your shelter works, if your farm manager is great. And once you put all this together and you understand what you're doing, then the sky could be your limit. I hope you guys um, have enjoyed this video and finds it educative. Let me know in the comment below. Don't forget, we talked about land, we talk about fencing, we talk about housing and shelter, we talk about genetics, the right breed, we talk about feeding, we talked about water, and then we talk about market. And then, but the eighth thing we talk about is management. And my bonus to you was start small and take time to learn the right processes. And once you have this figured out, my brother, you can go as big as you want and still be successful. Thank you so much for watching and keep on watching. We'll bring you another video in a few days. See you.